Welcome to the Monty Collier Report. I'm Monty Collier. This is the third part of our examination of R.C. Sproul Jr.'s article where he teaches justification by faith and works. Let's get started. Redefining saving faith is a major part of Federal Vision's attack on justification by faith alone. Federal Vision seeks to define saving faith in such a way that it becomes active in one's justification rather than passive. The notion that the act of one's faith is what justifies us before God is the heresy of evangelical obedience. It is essentially justification by faith and works. The Christian position is that the object of one's faith, not the act of it, is what justifies us before God. Our faith is completely passive in justification, and this is why our faith is called the instrumental cause of our justification. But never is it called the meritorious cause. Here is an example of Federal Vision proponent Andrew Sandlin redefining saving faith in order to teach justification by faith and works. Sandlin writes, and I quote, Justifying faith is both passive and active, and this is precisely what James denotes when he demands justification by works. End quote. Taken from Reversing Revisionism on Theonomy, Shepherd, and Federal Vision. Notice that Sandlin's claim is self-contradicting and therefore false. Saving faith is not active and passive when it comes to our justification before God. To support his heresy, Sandlin quotes from another heretic, J.I. Packer. Packer, as you may remember or may have known from your studies, is of course one of the main proponents of the heresy of evangelicals and Catholics together. Sandlin writes, and I quote, The truth is that every act of faith, psychologically regarded, is a matter of doing something. Knowing, receiving, and trusting are as much acts in the psychological sense as is resolving to obey. Yet no act of faith ever presents itself to its doer as other than a means of receiving undeserved mercy in some shape or form. This is as true of a trustful commitment to follow Christ as it is of a trustful resting on the Savior's promise of pardon. There is no need to restrict faith to passive reliance without active devotion in order to keep works righteousness and legalism out of the picture. End quote. Also taken from reversing revisionism. The quote from Packer further confuses justification with sanctification. The correct teaching maintains that the object of our faith is our justification, while the act of it is our sanctification. Notice Packer's conclusion. He does not wish to restrict saving faith to being only passive. He wishes it to be active, so works righteousness and legalism can enter into the picture. In other words, Packer believes that man is justified by faith and works. R.C. Sproul Jr.'s close friend, Douglas Wilson, also openly teaches the same heresy. Consider these remarks Douglas Wilson gave to an interviewer over justification and saving faith. Wilson states, and I quote, What drives apostasy is unbelief, and the engine that drives salvation is faith and only faith. Interviewer asked, But not faith only? Wilson continues, Not bare bones faith, not assent. Devils have that. True faith is more than assent. We say faith cannot be separated from trust and obedience, and we say saving faith cannot be separated from a life of obedience and trust. End quote. A companion to the current justification controversy, page 61. Dr. John W. Robbins gives this excellent analysis of Douglas Wilson's heresy. Robbins states, and I quote, Of course, this is a denial of Paul's explicit statement that it is belief apart from works, any and all works, that justifies. Paul does exactly what Wilson says cannot be done. He separates faith from works. Any message that does not do this is not the gospel. End quote. A companion to the current justification controversy, also page 61. Douglas Wilson, a man R.C. Sproul Jr. closely supports as a member of their denomination, Craig, and as a personal friend, rejects the gospel and teaches justification by faith and works. Let's now compare Doug Wilson's teaching to that of R.C. Sproul Jr.'s teaching found in the article we've been examining. Like Doug Wilson, Sproul Jr. writes, and I quote, Faith is more than believing something is true, end quote. I do not even need Calvinist theologians to demonstrate the absurdity of this claim. Confessional Lutheran theologians are sufficient. Consider Francis Piper, a 20th century Lutheran theologian. He points out Sproul Jr.'s mistake when he writes, and I quote, 
The idea that faith in its function as a receptive organ must do more than merely believe the gospel, that it receives forgiveness because it is a good quality, an ethical act, or produces good qualities, finds favor only with those who deny, or at any rate have forgotten, that Christ has perfectly redeemed the world and that the gospel is the message of God's grace. End quote. Christian Dogmatics, Volume 2, Part 3, Section 5, page 439. Francis Piper understands that it is heresy to claim that faith is more than belief. In Spro Jr.'s article that we're examining, he never comes out and gives a clear definition of the term trust. He simply asserts that it's faith and works, like his Federal Vision buddies. It is the absence of clear definition that leaves the door wide open for Roman Catholicism. So in his discussion on saving faith, and after he has clearly stated that faith is more than belief, R.C. Sproul says, and I quote, a living faith is a trusting faith, end quote. And here is where he would have to define trust as being only passive, but he fails to do so, and this is where he agrees with his Federal Vision proponents. This failure leaves the door wide open for works righteousness, and that is exactly what he goes on to assert in the article. To shut that door, one must clearly state that trust is completely passive and in no way active. If R.C. Spro Jr. can clearly teach that belief in the gospel is not enough, and this alone is heresy, then why can't he clearly separate faith and works when it comes to justification before God? Why can't he unequivocally state that saving faith is only passive? Another 20th century Lutheran theologian, this time John Theodore Mueller, does exactly what Sproul Jr. failed to do in his article. He teaches the biblical position on saving faith. Mueller writes, and I quote, Faith does not justify in itself, that is, as an act or habit of believing, nor through the works which it produces, but in view of its object. Because saving faith does not itself produce the righteousness by which the sinner is saved, but merely accepts the merits that have been secured for the world by Christ's obedience, our dogmaticians have called it a passive act, or a passive instrument. End quote. Taken from Christian Dogmatics, Faith Viewed as a Passive Act or a Passive Instrument, page 327. Notice how Mueller emphasizes saving faith as a passive act and a passive instrument. In doing so, Mueller shuts the door on Roman Catholicism and the teaching that one is justified by faith in works. So don't be fooled by Federal Vision proponents. Saving faith is always and only passive. It is not both active and passive, and it is only the object of our faith that justifies, never the act of it.